Shieldbearer is a trusted and treasured resource for all Greater Houston area residents in need of supportive counseling services. Our mission is to help nurture the mind, body, and spirit of all who seek help. This year has brought a lot of stress and hardship for people, either directly or indirectly, through variables related to the global pandemic. As a result, it is such an important time for all of us to build our inner resources. Clients of Shieldbearer take the ultimate step in self-care by seeking supportive counseling services. For 15 years, we have provided professional counseling services to over 100,000 individuals. Shieldbearer is passionate about helping people live abundant lives. We are here to help if you are experiencing depression, anxiety, difficulty with life transitions, trauma, abuse, or any other issue. You are not alone. Our name embodies our intention to reach and help all people seeking counseling services. We aim to eliminate financial and social barriers to getting help. Mental health is the foundation for well-being and effective functioning for individuals and communities. It is so much more than the absence of mental illness. When we function in a state of well-being, we naturally realize our abilities, cope with normal stresses of life, and work productively in our community. It is our goal to move a step closer to addressing the problem of the gap between the numbers of people in our community who need help with mental health issues and the number who actually receive help. Ultimately, we do not want anyone to suffer in silence. Shieldbearer receives regular referrals from hundreds of physicians, churches, and schools in the greater Houston area. We also take client referrals from government agencies and serve active military service personnel veterans and their families without regard to eligibility for insurance benefits. While we do take medical insurance for payment, we stand in the gap and help support people with no insurance or financial means to pay for needed counseling services. During this past year, we have helped thousands of people with a wide variety of issues. Some examples that come to mind are 350 people with trauma-related disorders, 300 teens, 200 children, 300 veterans and veteran family members, 600 victims of domestic violence, 350 couples, and over 100 family therapy sessions, 100 human trafficking survivors. The need is immense, and we expect to reach over 15,000 this year through our supportive counseling services. Over 35% of our clients do not have insurance coverage, and with your support, we can continue to serve these people through the toughest of circumstances. Our mental, physical, and spiritual health is interconnected, and we believe it is a community concern. Please help Shieldbearer further our mission of bringing supportive counseling services to all people in need in our community. Thank you for your support and please enjoy our virtual gala celebration. Please log on to shieldbearer.org to register today. We look forward to sharing our mission with you and your family. Thank you and welcome to Shieldbearer's annual fundraiser. Are you guys excited to be here tonight? All right. We are going to have an incredible night tonight. This is going to be so much fun. We are going to laugh. We are going to learn. And we are just going to make a difference in the, uh, the city of Houston. Are you all ready to do that? All right. If you are watching us online, do not adjust your screen. My hair is this big, and that's on purpose. I am a Texan. And you know what? I um, had bought this gala dress um, because this was supposed to be a gala. And because COVID and 2020 are trying to ruin all of our plans, um, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to wear my dress anyway. I'm going to go gallivanting because I am tired of 2020 ruining my plans. Are y'all tired of that? 
No more 2020. We're not afraid of you anymore. As a matter of fact, by the time this year is done, the 40-something plus year, days we got left, you're going to be glad to leave. How about that? I'm done with it. So my name is Amanda Hebert, and I am a comedian and motivational speaker, and I, it is my honor to be here to celebrate Shield Bearer. What an amazing um, community, what an amazing, amazing project that was started 15 years ago and has helped over 100,000 people in the Houston community. That is something to be celebrated. It is, it is incredible, and I love it. That's right. Woo-woo! That's it. We're going to do some woo-woo! If you're joining us on Facebook or YouTube, uh, give us some likes and some hearts let us know that you're there too you know what we'd actually ask you to share uh, start a watch party if you're on Facebook or subscribe if you're on uh, YouTube to our page we want we really want you uh, to get involved tonight is gonna be an incredible night um, you can learn a lot and you can also um, make a difference in your community so before I introduce the first video we're gonna talk a little bit about trauma tonight um, and before I talk about that I started thinking okay so what in my life has brought me so much trauma. And um, one thing in particular really, and, and just we're just gonna discount 2020 because we're done with it. No, tra no more trauma. But um, one thing in my life that has brought a lot of trauma um, is the medicine commercials. Um, Y'all, these things are crazy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You're watching TV, enjoying your favorite comedy show, and all of a sudden, do you or a loved one have tentac hydomylosis? Do you get an ingrown toenail or occasional headache? You may benefit from beetle hydamibidab or PDMP. <laughs> Before using PDMP, ask your doctor to check your brain for brain waves. Make sure that you want to live for longer than five years. Common side effects of using PDMP are hair loss, memory loss, broken ankles, hairy knuckles, daytime tears, nighttime tears, early afternoon tears, and hair loss and memory loss. PDMP might be right for you. Y'all know these commercials that I'm talking about? Like these side effects are terrifying. I'd just rather just live with whatever the disease is than take that medicine. You know what I'm talking about? And then two months later, skip to the law offices of Smith, Wesson, and Crisco want to know if you or a loved one has used fetal hydamine or PDMP. You may be due a large sum of money. You may also need an abdominal mesh. <laughs> See, y'all, that's my trauma, okay? And that ain't good. But you know what? There are a lot of people who have been through a lot of trauma. And I want to introduce, we're going to watch a video with Miss Courtney Wright, and she's going to tell us how to deal with trauma. Let's give her a hand. Hi, Courtney. Good to see you today. Um, today I'm with Courtney Wright clinical director of Shield Bear Counseling Centers. And today we're going to be talking about the topic of trauma. I just wanted to know a little bit more about what, what trauma is. It's talked about a lot and people use that, that term with, in connection with therapy. And I'm just wondering, what is the definition of trauma? That's such a great question. Mm -hmm. Trauma right now is really a buzzword, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's out and about. A lot of people are talking about mm -hmm. it. We see it on the news. It's a great question. What is trauma? When I talk about trauma, I basically explain it like this. Person may experience an event. They may not even identify it as traumatic at that time, but it is a life-shifting event. Mm -hmm. Something happens to them, and it is a shift completely for their mind, body, heart, and soul. Mm -hmm. Usually they're gonna identify that experience as negative, they might not even identify it as a traumatic event at the time. Mm -hmm. So that's really what trauma is. Mm -hmm. How is the definition of trauma today different than maybe um, the definition a few generations past? Sure, right? So we got introduced to the trauma word, the mm -hmm. trauma word, right? Yeah. PTSD, like yes. those kinds of words. Yes. Really coming from the Vietnam era. Right. right. We recognize that people coming from war were having certain experiences that were different from those that had not been to war. Mm -hmm. So really that's where that language started to develop. Mm -hmm. Recently, with a lot of understanding about trauma, what the brain experiences, 
so much research and so much experiential work, we know that a traumatic event could be anything. It could be a wartime experience. It could be a car accident. It could be a medical event. It could even be the death of a pet that can have that whole mind, body, heart, soul shift. Mm -hmm. So it went from this experience that somebody had to have where their life had to be in danger to recognizing that that didn't need to occur. I understand. Yeah. What does trauma do to the brain? To How does it affect the brain? Sure. So the brain responds to trauma mm -hmm. in a very specific way. The brain is going to put somebody into a fight, flight, or freeze response. Right. Right? So when we have a traumatic event, our brain gets neuroconnected, right? Mm -hmm. Through a whole series mm -hmm. of events that's way too complicated to understand. But what ends up happening is that certain experiences get connected to each other. And that's to help us survive. It also helps us stay in a fight, flight, or freeze response. So the brain will shut off cognitively. You can't learn any new experiences when you're experiencing a trauma. It might be um, a great example as if you've had a car accident and you get out of the car and people are asking you, are you okay? Where's your car insurance information? Mm -hmm. And you've had your car insurance information in the glove box for the last 10 years. You know exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, you can't piece that information together. That's a perfect example of what the brain is doing during a traumatic event. It's shutting out all the information that you don't need and it's keeping you in that survival stage of fight, flight, or freeze. Okay. As a clinician, what kind of behaviors do you see that present for clients who come to see you who maybe experience trauma? Oh, the brain can respond in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Clients may present with history of depression, of anxiety, mm -hmm. of panic disorders. We right. may see clients have a history of eating disorders or substance abuse chemical dependency disorders. Right. We may have a client that experiences extreme dissociation or sure. lack of connection in relationships. And they may not even recognize that those experiences are connected to a traumatic event. They just think, oh, I'm feeling a little bit depressed because I lost my job. Or, oh, I'm feeling a little bit anxious and I'm not really sure why. So we see it present in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what do you do as a psychotherapist, as a clinician to help a client recover or improve deal with symptoms, what are the, some of the things that you recommend doing? Sure. Yeah. A trauma-informed clinician is going to always take a lens or a perspective through the therapeutic process that this person okay. has experienced a traumatic event. Right. Right. So that's the first and foremost thing. They're going to help a client recognize through techniques of mindfulness, mm -hmm. of somatic orientation. They're going to do some techniques that may not even be talk therapy and may be completely out of the box and something you wouldn't even understand or recognize as part of therapy. Mm -hmm. Counselors can use a variety of techniques and a variety of orientations. Some of the most popular are trauma informed cognitive behavioral therapy. Therapy, EMDR, which stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing Therapy. Right. So there's a lot of targeted interventions that can be used. Great. Can yeah. trauma be healed in a person? Is there a healing that can take place, really, ultimately? Sure. And that's mm -hmm. a great word because clients will come to us and say, cure me. Courtney, please right. cure me. Right. Make me forget about this experience. Sure. Make me just feel better. Mm -hmm. I want it all to go away. Right. And when we're talking about trauma, we're really focusing in on that word recovery. The end okay. stage, we want to get to a place where a client feels integrated, where they're living a life that is healthy and happy and connected. It's not about forgetting an event, although certainly we wish that we could be like the guys in Men in Black and take it away, right? Right. Um, but that's not necessarily what that's going to look like. We want somebody to be able to say, this event happened to me and through being through whatever kinds of strategies and techniques and talk therapy that I used to work on it, I went from this stage to this stage of recovery and it's integrated. Right. Integrated. How long does it take to work through trauma in, in therapy? 
right? Yeah. I wish I had a magic <laughs> wand and that we could take it away in two sessions, right? Everybody would be happy Everyone's with that. Everyone's different, I suppose, right? So. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I've worked with clients for just a couple of sessions. Mm -hmm. I've worked with clients for several years. Okay. It really depends on how their brain has responded to that trauma mm -hmm. and how many behavioral symptoms they're experiencing that they want a reduction in. Sure. Sometimes trauma, it doesn't go away at all, right? right. It, because of the way the brain works, it's going to stay in our cells. It's going to change our DNA. We've yes. seen research re related to that. Yes. So it could take a very long time. It could take generations to heal. Mm -hmm. But we're really excited because there's a lot of things that can be done to help a person get towards that recovery. Sure. Sounds like it. Do you have any other uh, recommendations about what someone should do if they're feeling traumatized by something? Sure. Recognize that, that you are not alone, okay. that everybody experiences moments in their life which are traumatic, mm -hmm. right? We talked mm -hmm. about just because I never went to war doesn't mean that I haven't experienced traumatic events. And to be mindful and to give ourselves permission to seek recovery, mm -hmm. permission to seek help, end the stigma, yes. and look forward to a life of happiness and health. Thank you so much. That's very helpful information. Appreciate your time today. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. All right, let's give Miss Courtney a hand because that's great information. Honestly, I wish that I knew her when I had children because you want to talk about trauma. That's some serious trauma. You have no idea what you're walking into. You know, everybody says, oh, it's just a blessing from the Lord. Yes, <laughs> but it is horrible. I mean, they don't sleep. They want to eat all the time. It's all about them. You want to talk, that's trauma, okay? I literally remember asking my mother-in-law, um, so when do I feel normal again? And she just laughed at me. And she's like, yeah, you'll never feel normal again. So, anyways, a lot of people say that, too, about 2020. Yeah, we'll never feel normal again. We'll just move to a new normal. But, anyways, we carry on. So, um, up next, we have um, an amazing video by Miss Joyce Finch, where she's going to talk about the trends in youth and mental health. And um, I think this is amazing. I'm very excited about to find out about Shieldbearer and all this because I have some children, as I mentioned, and they are going to need some canceling. Because not, I mean, counseling, not canceling. <laughs> I tried to cancel them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love my children. They are wonderful. They're the reason I went into comedy because, it, anyways, we'll carry on. We'll go. We'll, we'll get into that, and I don't want to jump ahead. But, y'all, this is going to be an incredible session. Um, if you have kids out there, um, to help to learn to understand what they're dealing with, they're, it, they're dealing with stuff we never dealt with. And so we have to be in, attuned to what's going on in their world. And we need a village. We've heard, you know, the saying, it takes a village to raise the children. This can be part of your village. We, you need a shield bearer in your life for your kids. And um, I just want to encourage you, right now, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, there's a link where you can click to donate, to give, to keep Shield Bear moving and keep them changing our Houston community and bringing hope to our, when we start, we start in the small places. We start with Houston and the vision is the world. So you can make a difference right now. You can turn 2020 around. So go ahead and click that link and make your donation. And let's listen to Miss Joyce Finch and the wisdom she's got to share. Hi, Joyce. How are you? I'm good. Today okay, I'm good. talking with Joyce Finch. Um, she's one of the counselors at Shield Bear Counseling Centers. And today I'd like to talk with you about trends in mental health for youth and teens and children. Mm -hmm. In general, what are some of the things that you see in children today and teens today mm -hmm. with regard to mental health? What are some of your concerns, I guess? So many of them have depression, they have anxiety, they are, uh, you know, they're going through, the parents are going through a divorce, and of course social media and all the problems with social media. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of discussion about like maybe three primary areas of stress points for children, that being social media, overuse of social media, great focus on being perfect, mm -hmm. perfectionism, and issues that are going on in the family. So 
as a counselor, what can you do to help a child be successful and move out of a state of depression and anxiety mm -hmm. into a better way of coping? Well, one of the things I do is I discuss their strengths because uh -huh. I don't want them to focus on their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So I like to find out their strengths and sometimes they, they have no idea what their strengths are. So I start by saying, well, you came to counseling. Even though you didn't want to come and your parents forced you to come, you still came to counseling. So, so a lot of emphasis on exploring self-esteem. Yes, uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yes, that's definitely the self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And to let them know that also several other teens and children have a lot of your uh, concerns and depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. There, in recent times, in the past, just in the past couple of years, teen suicide has been on mm -hmm. the rise dramatically, and doctors, psychologists aren't entirely sure why that is happening. Mm -hmm. But what are maybe some of the the warning signs of that, and what can people do, like people in a child's family, do to be have an awareness about about that particular yeah. issue. One of the things is for the parent or parents to be focused on the child. If there's a change in clothes, change in uh, at school, they're acting out more at school. If lower grades, uh, those are some of the warning signs. Uh, quiet. Maybe at at one time they were extroverts and now they're real introverts. Those are some of the things to look for. The sure. big things. Yeah. Depression, anxiety, suicide, ideation, some of that is associated with just being in a family unit. Right. So do you, do you recommend that children do therapy with their family, as a family, as, as a, an approach? Or yeah. do you focus primarily on the child that is having the issue? Or is it a combination? It's a combination. Mm -hmm. Because uh, many times you want to get the parent or parents and the siblings involved. Because mm -hmm. maybe, let's just say the middle child is having issues. And you want to see how, you want to see how the family is reacting to each other. Mm -hmm. And you don't want the child that's not doing well to be the scapegoat. You want to make sure, in, if you're with the whole family, that no one picks on anyone. Right, exactly. How has, um, have, have you seen therapy be successful for some of the children that you've worked with before. Yeah, I had a, a st uh, student, she was, no, I shouldn't say student, a client, because <laughs> I was a school counselor for several years. Okay. Uh, but a client was uh, a non-suicidal self-injury. Yes. And I worked with her, and uh, again, we worked on strings. I also got a, a big piece of bulletin board, and she laid on the floor, and I, you know, drew an outline of her, and then she was to use a a red marker and put on there all the places that she, because she cut, not only okay. uh, where she cut or parts of the body that were really hurting her. So she put like red marks where she's cut on her wrist mm. and then she would uh, drew a red mark on her stomach because she was not eating like she should and when she did eat, yeah, she didn't feel good after she ate. So we worked on you know, what time of day mm -hmm. she wants to cut, uh, what's happening at the time that she wants to cut. Mm -hmm. So we worked on that, we worked on her strengths. And after several months, she was so much better mm -hmm. that she would, instead of cutting herself, she would like scream in a pillow or write down all her feelings because I encouraged them to keep a journal of their feelings. Mm -hmm. How do you help parents who have children who are dealing with mental health challenges, what what do you recommend that parents do? Like I said earlier, be yeah. on the lookout for changes yeah. and also be a role model. Okay, okay. They, you know, if they cuss and, and they drink a lot and they smoke marijuana or use illicit drugs, you know, what's a child gonna see? They're gonna see that and then they're gonna think, oh, my parents do it, it's okay. There's modeling involved right. for sure. And have your children be involved, not overly involved, because I see children these days that are so overly involved, you know, that they don't really have time to be, to do things as a family. 
Yeah, I mean, there's the old adage that sitting down to have dinner together yes. is one of the most um, helpful things to do. Right. For, mm -hmm. for children and for the whole family. Right, and don't ask them, uh, how was today? Right. They're going to say, okay, or, you know, the same. Just say, what did you really enjoy doing today? Ask them questions like that. Mm -hmm. Where you yeah. want more than a yes or no, or okay, or the usual. Mm -hmm. It sounds like therapy with children is, it takes a big commitment from the parents mm -hmm. to, for that to be successful. The parent really needs to help drive that, right. that process. Right, and mm -hmm. the important thing to let the parents know too that what the child tells me is confidential unless they're going to harm themselves, someone else, or if the court subpoenas their records. Okay. You know, if they want to know how the session went, I always say, fine, I, I don't, because then I don't have the trust of the child. And the child knows this so that yes. the child can feel safe in yes. session. Yes, because okay. I want them to feel safe that this is a one place that they are safe to tell me what they want to tell me. Excellent. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing those mm -hmm. points. I mm -hmm. appreciate your time You're today. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. Thank uh -huh. you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Wasn't Miss Joyce just awesome? I know. I, I feel like I've learned so much from her just watching that video. I think that's absolutely incredible. Um, I, I just kind of wish I could have met her because she seems like a sweet, a loving lady and, and somebody that our kids need in their life. Um, so before we move forward, I just want to encourage you. I just started a watch party on Facebook. Guys, if you're here and you've got your phones, get it out, get Facebook, and let's get a watch party going because we want to get as many people online watching and learning and laughing about mental health because we really do. Laughing is going to help us. Learning the options, what, what shield bearer brings is really going to help us and um, also giving is really going to help shield bearers so if you're watching us on facebook if you're watching us on youtube um, click the link and give a donation what you can give make a make a difference make 2020 one of the best years in your life the way that you do that is by giving the value of a life is not how much you acquire in your life but how much you pour out of your life into other people so if you want to make your life valuable at the end of this year just plant a seed for someone else because it will it will just bless you so much. So next, we have got an incredible couple, the the White family. We have Matthew and Amy White. Let's try. Let's give them a hand of applause. So 15 years ago, or probably a little bit more than that, God laid on their heart to begin to a counseling service, but they weren't really sure how to do that. And I think it's so incredible that they started this from you know from nothing. And um, so it made me think about what have I started in my marriage. Um, I started a fight. <laughs> I've gotten really good at that. Really, I win. <laughs> Actually, I didn't win for a long time, but now I'm, I'm winning. Um, but my husband's not watching. <laughs> He's not watching this, or he better not be, because then I might be losing. <laughs> but anyways, um, I I think you're going to so enjoy meeting um, Matthew and Amy White. Enjoy the video. Hi, Matt. Hi, Amy. Hi, Good Rebecca. Good to see you today. Great today. To see you. Yeah, I'm with Matt and Amy White. And Matt was the founder of Shield Bear Counseling Centers. We were, yes. Way back in 2005, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Okay. God had a great plan, and we didn't know it yet. No. How did you come up with the idea to start a counseling center. It's a, that's a big mission. <laughs> yeah, so I think originally, um, you know, we just, we recognized some friends and um, good friends of ours that were having some issues. In fact, there were five families that were going through some marital problems. And we've kind of just always been, uh, both of us individually and as a couple have always been people that others come to for advice or guidance. I don't know why. It's one of those uh, gifts that God's given us, I suppose. But um, yeah, they, they were coming to us for advice and, and we just started asking, you know, where's the resources for people to get help? You know, what's available out there in our churches and our community uh, for people to get the help they need? And, you know, so we started questioning that and looking into that and praying about it because we felt like God was really calling us into 
uh, something different, something that maybe didn't exist, or at least at the very least didn't exist enough. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, we started to pray about it and and do our research and look into it. Well, and he even we even went the route of am I supposed to go to Bible college? You know, am I supposed to be in ministry? And we even explored that, and you know, we even you know said, God, you know, if that's what we're supposed to be, then you have to change our hearts and you know make us what you want us to be. And then with mm -hmm. people that were in our lives, just with so much trauma going on, and that trauma can look like anything. Right. But um, you know, they didn't want to go to a counselor that was in their church, mm -hmm. um, and then sit, but you know, see them on Sundays, and right. so. And certainly there's nothing wrong with oh, that. Oh, no, there's, there's a place. A place. There's a place. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But also Absolutely. people, a lot of people prefer the, the confidentiality, mm -hmm. the amenity to, to go to a, a separate location, a separate place. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, being able to afford it. You know, Absolutely. what does that look like? So then, you know, Matt and the Lord and other geniuses came up, you know, at the sliding scale and, you know, have some skin in the game, but, you know, pay what you can afford and... Well, you've probably heard it, you know, mm -hmm. so money is not an obstacle to get the highest level of care you need. That is so what we Shield do at Shieldbear. Our, ca our call right. is come. come. It doesn't, we'll figure out the finances, just get here and get the, get the help you need. Mm -hmm. Do not yeah. suffer alone. Right. right. There are people who yeah. are available for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a big part of what Matt's heart was for men, you know, Satan's trying to take out the family and so mm -hmm. he had a big he has still has a big heart for men and you know leading their families and you know what does that mean what does that look like in the Lord and so um, you know we kind of were really looking at that piece too but yet you know with the whole family you need counseling and so anyway so that was a big piece mm -hmm. of it and you know just where God has taken this and the people that he you know it's the hands and feet of you guys in the field every day it was nothing like we had i mean it was beyond our imagination right. so i mean god just has kept the doors open and it's amazing so you started amazing. yeah with some seed money to open an office and yeah. you had your first clinical director that you worked with right matt and then yeah so we uh, someone offered to uh seed us ten thousand dollars to open okay. the doors okay which is not very much money, you no. know, when you think about all your expenses and hiring staff and so on. Right. But yeah, we stepped out on faith with that and uh, found a person who had some similar goals to help people mm -hmm. uh, to be our clinical director. Then she hired our first counselor with her. Mm -hmm. so Tell we, about the building, how much we got the office space for. Yeah, we, we got a small office space, but it was a dollar a square foot a month, you know, so it, it was like four, four hundred fifty dollars <laughs> you know, and amazing. yeah, it's like, God, you know, what's amazing is, and, and I shared this with you before, but yeah. uh, there was many times, and, and it still happens, but there have been many times where we need $20,000 to pay our bills, right. but this week, by Friday, I need $20,000, you know, right. Roy or... Even that, you know, I've called and said, and I'm like, I don't know how we'll get that. I don't know where that's coming from. And then literally by Friday, we have a check for the exact amount in the in the mailbox. Wasn't expected. Didn't, or several checks that know, equal that. That equal yeah. that. That's, and, you know, God's always been there and, and fulfilled provision. his promise, you know, which yeah. is. And we've said, God, if you want this open, do it. Because I can't, I don't know what to do, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else I can do. You know, and he always has showed up, and he's proven that to us for 15 years now that uh, that he's got this. Absolutely, yeah. it's, a, yeah. it's incredible. So you started a lot with the marriage, um, helping with marriage and family, but Shield Bearer really serves yeah. uh, people with all kinds of mental health issues, mm. and that is one thing mm. that's been astonishing for me to learn. Mm. Um, people who've been who've experienced human trafficking, survivors mm. of that, yeah. um, people who have been abused, veterans, mm -hmm. um, people with PTSD, mm -hmm. trauma, trauma Definitely. Mm -hmm. even some homeless people in the homeless population. Right, right. Yeah, just individuals, marriage, you know, mm -hmm. teens that Joyce was talking teens, about. Right. And, um, really just, you know, and if we can't serve, then we have so much, you know, 
people that we can reach out to, as you all know, to, you know, we'll find you a place if it's, right. you know. Right. Or if we've just served a piece of their, what they need, you know, to help them move on to wherever they need to go. It's just amazing. It is amazing. Mm-hmm. Do you well, you guys are amazing. It's oh. God's just put, it's so awesome how this tapestry, you know, like of life or just whatever he yeah. Whatever we're involved with, he just puts the right people at the right time. And then if people need to go, but they were there at the right time. You know, so it's just, it's um, really cool. Right. Do you have a long-term vision for Shield Bear to keep on? Yeah, well, um, now telemedicine, maybe this is even more... uh, 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 (laughs) We have a broader reach. Uh, Just, um, yeah, with telemedicine, I mean, I'd like us to be everywhere. I mean, I'd like to be yeah. a shield bearer, either affiliated or aligned uh, ministry with us in every city in the country. And with telemedicine, you can be international now. You could, we could be helping people, providing services, therapy over the internet, you know, or training sessions and, and, and so on. I mean, one of the other things that, that we haven't mentioned is, is our uh, desire to help uh, cre- uh, create and build uh, strong Christian therapist out in the community. So we've mm-hmm. aligned ourselves with different uh, programs like Sam Houston State and some with UT and other, other schools that have their licensed professional counselors or licensed social workers or whatever. They can come intern at Chilbert and they get the training they need. And hopefully we keep them. If not, we turn them out well, to the community we're and training get to work. another generation of, of right. helpers. Right. So that's right. a lovely thing too. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. But yeah, the vision, be everywhere, you know, and uh, there's so much need. And we do cover and, and take care of a lot of different mental health issues uh, from family to individuals to, to children uh, to human trafficking, like you said, trauma and so on. So the need is, the need is th- beyond us. Beyond. Uh, you know, it's beyond all the therapists that exist really right mm-hmm. we need more uh we need more support so we can grow and uh you want to grow in the right way but there's the need is is enormous and so we want to be everywhere yeah you know, one of the things i think that is so special though about shield bear is that shield bear really tries to eliminate the barriers for people in getting help right, right. right. financial stigma um, right, right. Uh, variety of things well is it doesn't harris county don't don't we're like one of their first referrals we are like we are and we're a center of excellence for human traffic um, victims we don't do the rescuing we just uh, we we counsel them and help them Mm -hmm. and as you can imagine it's a longer counseling process and therapy process but you know we we work with them as well but um yeah we do take insurance, which is wonderful, oh, yeah, that's and so we great. also offer sliding scale for anyone who, regardless of ability to. We we'll take insurance now. We, we <laughs> like the full fee because it helps pay the bills, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, if you can only pay five bucks, you know, we we will it's take them. Get you know, the help. We will you not need. turn anyone away for money. Mm-hmm. Right. And we have group therapies too, like grief counseling and divorce. Mm-hmm. Divorce. Um, um, Groups, support groups, support support groups, groups mm-hmm. and things like a that. A lot of groups, yeah. Right now, during mm-hmm. this time of COVID, those are not happening. Virtual, but yeah. But, yeah, as yeah. much, but they will go, yeah. go back to, to normal soon. Yes. Yeah. Do you have a favorite story about Shield oh. Bear to share or anything? Mm. Besides keeping the doors open. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's one of my favorite stories. Yeah. That's, man, there's so many. You know, things. I think it's a, it, there was a human traffic victim. Uh-huh who had, um, I don't remember all the exact details, but she had been in human trafficking since she was a young girl, and Mm -hmm. she was now, I think, an adult, 18, 19 years of age, and she was rescued, and uh, and then we worked with her for uh, well over a year, Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it turned out she had a great success story. I mean, she ended up going to college, was enrolled locally at local university, and was living out her out on her own. She uh, and there's others that could probably tell this story better, but and she like had it for the first time had her own checkbook. Yes, you know it was yes. like this is mine, and I signed my name 
on something yeah, that's just small. Self sufficiency, yeah, yeah, yeah. healing, yeah. amazing, and, and coming I, full circle. We can't relate. I can't no. relate to that. Mm-hmm. You know, no. and it's just to to. I mean, she was free. She was. Free. She was. She now has life. You know, and we were a part of that. We were a part of you know helping her get there. And yeah, that's that huge. that makes you want to just keep working. Just keep. You know, mm-hmm. helping people yeah. like that. You Making know? sure we our doors don't close. And mm-hmm. just everyday things like, you know, friends or people, you know, or people we meet at when, um, you know, galas used to be in person. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's coming up, by the way. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, hello. We're here. <laughs> and um, I know, right? But just, you know, thank you. Wow. You know, went to counseling, saved our marriage, or really helped us be friends again, or you know, really helped us communicate with our kids, or uh, I really found out a lot about myself, you know, so just everyday stories, too. I mean, those are huge. Those, those are, are huge. just as huge as... As the more... As in sex trafficking, which, mm-hmm. you know, in its, in its own right. Mm-hmm. So it's just amazing, just... You know, otherwise, that like, I have a particular friend I'm thinking about that, you know, she was in between jobs a lot, and she, you know, had several children adult children pass away very close together Mm -hmm. and just a lot of trauma in their family and you know she just needed some some somewhere to go to you know for absolutely you know to vent to you know have some tools in her toolbox to reach in and you know just everyday life that you know what satan's throwing at us is pretty big every day every day and we can get stuck on those lies that we believe about ourselves. and you know shield bearer is you know a beacon of light so you know amy brings up a good point we always we tend to focus on the really bad stories and the, exactly. the thing the 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 most traumatic situations mm-hmm. and that's great we're there for that we mm-hmm. want to be there for that mm-hmm. but all of us are, are dragging a bag of junk behind us and mm-hmm. all of us have issues and she'll bear is a place for anyone to come yeah. for your help whatever it is whatever it is and whatever you're dealing with that's the most important thing that is the most traumatic for you in your life and you know i mean as as a society we kind of you know we don't talk about mental health no. we don't talk Mm-mm. about these no. things you know it's kind of embarrassing mm-hmm. and it shouldn't be no if you need help go get help Mm-hmm. And of course, we recommend Chillbear. Go to Chillbear <laughs> because we are Absolutely. there for you. Uh, we're a, a, a group of people who love you and want to help you, and uh, and we're determined to help you. You know, mm-hmm. so uh, get the help you need. Don't yeah. don't. Yeah. You said it earlier. Don't sit behind your closed doors. On, you know, in your house and suffer silently. Absolutely you know? right. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing. And we have yeah. the best. You know, from direct, from executive director to the people who greet you at the door, the intake, you know, on the phone. Mm-hmm. The kindest There's, people. And yeah, just the, the compassion. Really yes. compassionate, competent. And, and like, you just mm-hmm. reiterate, we're all going through something. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, we all, yes. doesn't, you know, mm-hmm. so. For sure. It's the test of life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's amazing to see just what God has done and what he's doing and. You 15 know, especially years is amazing. It is. Mm-hmm. And especially, you know, in 2020, you know, the crazy year. Uh, but there can be so many blessings, too. Yes. You know, we don't have to focus. Just like every day, we don't have to focus on the negative. No. We can mm-hmm. we can do this together, mm-hmm. for sure. Gratitude. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank Appreciate you so your much. Time. Yeah, right. absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. We're, thank we're you. Thankful. Appreciate it. Blessed. Yeah. woo that is phenomenal. You know, there are so many people in the world, um, especially with social media, there are so many people who in the world who like to run around and scream, the world is on fire, the world is on fire, the world is on fire. But there's very few people who will stop and go get water and start to put the fire out. And that is what you guys have done with Shield Bear. And that is, we need so many more people like that who don't scream about what's wrong with the world, but they're, they've decided, I'm gonna be a solution. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help out where I am needed. And that is what adds value to our life. And so I thank you guys. What an incredible couple. What a great night. Um, yes, let's give them another hand. This has been an incredible night. I hope that you are enjoying yourself. I really am. I've learned a lot. Um, up next, we have, um, how do I say this? It's very apropos for 2020 that I would have to introduce myself. 
And actually, apropos is out the window. There's no, there's no, there's nothing fitting about me having to introduce myself. But um, I, I did get to sit down with Rebecca and learn a lot. Well, actually, I talked a lot. I'll just be honest. But <laughs> anyways, just listen and you can hear. Hi, Amanda. How are you doing? Good. How are Thanks. you, Rebecca? Great. Thanks so much for coming and speaking with us today about Shield Bear Counseling Centers. I'm so excited to be here. I know that you're a big fan of our work, and I just wanted to know from your perspective, um, maybe you can share what, what it means to you and what you think. Um, well, I didn't know about Shield Bear until uh, Thad reached out on uh, the website um, about your event and what he shared with what you guys do the, with the counseling and the different groups that you counsel with, with marriage and family and depression, anxiety, and then dealing with people uh, who've gone through PTSD, like through Harvey and all that, and then rehabilitating people uh, in sex trafficking and all of those things and working with veterans and yes. all of those things just like ticked all of my marks because I love to support uh, people who have fought for our country. All of my family are all of my family are veterans, and mm -hmm. so I love that you do that. I love that you know you're supporting people, marriage and family. I've been married for almost 20 years. We need the support. You know, you know, whenever you're married, you just you need that extra help. Um, and I think the main thing that really got me is you're rehabilitating victims of sex trafficking. When I was about seven or eight years old, I was in um, my front yard playing and a car drove up onto my yard and I was by myself and a man got out of the passenger side and was coming towards me with his hand out. He was going to grab me and I thank God had the quick wit to run inside and get away from uh, the person. But from that moment on, it affected me and I realized that I was very blessed and I began to, I began to think, think about and pray for the ones that weren't, you know, from that moment on, the ones that you know, I would see the kids on the milk cartons or the lists in the grocery stores of the children that had been abducted. So I would pray for those kids. I had no idea that there was an actual, that slavery still existed until only a few years ago, did I learn that? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the more and more we're aware, the more we become involved. And I've been involved with other ministries to help uh, with sex trafficking. And I love that you guys do that. And not only do I love that, but you you do it all you you work on every end of the spectrum and you do it for little or no money you know, according to what people are and, and you also accept insurance i mean i don't, I don't know that i've ever seen a place uh, that does that and that can provide you work on the bruises and you work on the train wrecks and i think that is just absolutely phenomenal and then when I got to meet you guys and hear your heart for what you do and how it was started by a couple in a church who saw that marriages needed help. Mm -hmm. and, and it's all out of love and, and encouraging people. That was uh, just huge to me. It's just, like I said, you just checked off all my marks and I'm like, this is something that I want to be a part of. And, you know, I just want to support you because I want people to know that you know whatever you go through in life that does not identify you only if you allow it to identify you but there is help there are tools there are counselors at shield bearer who are there to walk you through they have the tools that you need to walk you through whatever it is you're walking through and that there is joy there is joy to be found in all life and i just love what you guys do thank you that couldn't be more well stated. <laughs> That's what we do. So um, we just want to make sure that, that all people know about Shield Bearer and, and what we provide and to help remove barriers for getting help, whether it's money or stigma or anything. Just come. Just come. I love that. And mm -hmm. um, I love the plans that you have for the future that was sharing with me. I mean, I love that you don't just say, okay, well, we're just this little organization and, you know, and, and this is our goal, but I mean, you have a huge vision for the future. And that is so important too, because 
you, what you're doing is imperative. I mean, people right now are so terrified they don't want to come out of their homes. Mm -hmm. And they need encouragement. They need people to say, you know what, we're going to make it through this. Mm -hmm. We're going to be okay um, in every facet of their life. So you guys are imperative uh, to the future of our city and our nation. We need more shield bearers. We, we do. <laughs> We, we really do. do, yeah. We just want to really encourage um, help and and health and healing for people. I love in, it in the way that we can. I love it. I think that's it's all our jobs, but I can't do the counseling. I can do the no. encouragement. I can make you laugh, but somebody has got to get in there and and do the dirty work and listen and you know hear all of the stuff the good, bad, and ugly, and then walk you through that. And that's so important. I've been, I've, I've gone to marriage counseling. I've gone to see a counselor um, many times. I know how valuable it was to me. I know that I wouldn't be here had I not taken the time to get those tools that I needed to work on me, to love myself enough to work on me, to move forward. And that's what you guys do. You're teaching people how to love theirself. And that's so vital. And it just leads to to help in our community and to, to the broader world. Right. So Right. Which is so good, great. The your the family, the health of the family. The health of the family. So important. It's critical. Because it literally is the pinnacle on which our community and our nation is is set on is the family. Absolutely. And whenever we have broken families, then we have broken people. And then when, bro when we have broken people, they do things and hurt other people. Mm -hmm. But when you have healed people, and when you have joyful people, they're gonna be the ones that are gonna help heal others. Mm -hmm. So that's what I love about what you do too. It's all reciprocal. Everything that God does to bring healing, everything that he does, he's a creative God. So everything he does, it's reciprocal. He gave us the tree, and on the tree is the fruit. And in the fruit is the seed, and in the seed is the tree. And so every time when you're working with someone and you're bringing them to a place of healing, they're going to experience new joy, and then they get to share their story with someone else who needs healing. And then it starts the whole cycle over again. The whole circle. It's, it's so reciprocal, and it's, mm -hmm. so, it's just so vital. If we want to change our world, a lot of people want to point out all the things that are wrong right. in our world. Right. And, you know, just... Let's just talk about the things that are wrong. I want to hear from the people that are doing something that is healing our world. And that's what you guys are doing. You are really and truly every day, one person at a time, healing the world. That's how you change a world. That's how, that's you, how you change, change a nation. It's not by pointing out, this is so wrong, all of these. No, it's by the, and, you, and I hadn't heard of you before, mm -hmm. but because it's not like you're, you're out there you know, making a name for yourself because you're not, you're, you're just doing what you're supposed to do. What my desire is that we make your name so loud that it drowns out all the people who are just talking about what's wrong in the world and, and that that becomes more important. What's, what's right in the world and who's making a positive influence on the world. Thank you so much. <laughs> my pleasure. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Oh my word, will she ever shut up? <laughs> Y'all, I mean, I knew, I knew I talked, but when I saw that video and I realized that I talked longer than any professional, except for the founders, I'm like, now I realize why my children talk so much. <laughs> it's my fault, Lord, I apologize. But oh my good, good grief. <laughs> oh Lord, I just, I, you're welcome. <laughs> it's what I do. But uh, so the next thing we're about to talk about is grief. And um, we've all dealt with this in our lives. I mean, you can't go through life without losing a loved one. And um, I remember whenever I was a teenager and I was talking to my grandmother and she began to talk about her husband who she lost over 40 years ago. And when she was talking, she just began to 
burst into tears and to cry as if she had just lost him. And so I learned, because I can still feel that same way about the loss of her, that grief is a process that we live, we learn to live with, um, and we can still have a joyful life, um, but it's definitely, we definitely sometimes need some help to get through that. So let's listen to Michelle Timofonte share her wisdom in that. Hi, I'm here with Michelle Tamafont, who's a counselor at Shield Bear Counseling Centers. Today, Michelle, welcome. We're going to talk about um, the difficult topic of grief. And we've, we've all grieved something at some point in, in our lives. It's just a, a natural part of life, unfortunately. But maybe you can go into that a little bit more and describe what is grief? What happens when we grieve? Grief, like you said, it is a very natural process, mm -hmm. and it results after we lose someone or something that we love um, that's very dear to us. Mm -hmm. Often the pain and loss of grief can be extremely overwhelming, and we go through all different kinds of emotions during mm -hmm. that time, and it might begin with shock, then anger, then guilt, and disbelieving, and a deep, profound sense of sadness. Mm -hmm. And some of those those feelings, those feelings occur. And I know the psychologist who wrote about that, Elizabeth um, Kubler-Ross, yes. is that correct? Mm -hmm. She described that, she explained that uh, we, we don't always have those, those feelings or those experiences in, in a linear order or fashion. Correct. Mm -hmm. So she listed five different stages of grief. Right, and okay. she actually discovered those by studying people that had a terminal illness. Okay. Um, but we found that those five stages happen in anyone dealing with loss or grief. Um, and the stages are denial, when we're mm -hmm. not willing to accept what happened. Mm -hmm. Anger, we ask those questions. Why me? Uh, why now? Mm -hmm. Bargaining, mm -hmm. we might be willing to give up something to get our loss back or to right. change the process of that loss. And then depression, that deep sadness. And finally, acceptance. Um, and acceptance doesn't necessarily mean letting go of that person. Right. Um, but it means accepting the fact that the loss happened and being ready and able to move on with our lives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes grief can seem uh, like depression. What is, what's the difference between the two and how do you know if your grief has become so profound that you are depressed and you can't get out of it? That's a really good question because they, they can be very hard to mm -hmm. differentiate. But the main difference is, like you said, grief is not a linear process. Right. We don't start at denial and end at acceptance and that's, that's the end of it. It's um, similar to a roller coaster ride where we mm -hmm. go up and down and we experience these emotions at different times. We might experience one of those, the, the denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. We might go back through and experience one of them twice. Mm -hmm. um, we might get to acceptance, and then something sets us off and puts us back into the grief cycle. Um, maybe a family event or something can lead to that. The difference with depression is depression is that profound sadness, uh, that helplessness, and hopelessness, and it's constant. Rarely are we through ups and downs in depression. We might have some little ones, um, but it's more of a constant feeling of hopelessness. Right. Sometimes people experience traumatic situations that are so overwhelming and that lead to PTSD. Is there some connection between um, grief and PTSD in some circumstances? There absolutely is. Okay. If the death is very sudden, very extreme, very violent, mm -hmm. um, it can cause reactions in our body really that lead us traumatized mm -hmm. by this. And once we have that traumatization, that trauma in us, the emotions are more than just the ones we listed through for grief. They also include memories kind of flashing into our head, that despair, um, an overwhelming feeling of really not wanting to move on with our lives and maybe getting stuck within ourselves, retreating back into ourselves or withdrawing from family and friends. And typically in that case, with the traumatization, that can be 
classified as PTSD, and mm-hmm. it might take a clinical professional to help us move on and overcome our obstacles at that time. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me how does someone grieve something well, and what do you do as a clinician to help a person through the grief process? Well, it's very important that they feel their emotions. Okay. I think a lot of times during grief or in grief, we want to block that emotion because it doesn't feel good. Right. Or we want to, again, withdraw or retreat back into ourselves um, because we're safer that mm-hmm. way. But it's really important to feel the emotions. Mm-hmm. And maybe with the help of a counselor, we can help them to feel safe in feeling those emotions and feel comfortable in them. What can happen if we block an emotion or we stay in it too long, we're not progressing through to the next stage of grief. Sure. And then we get stuck. Mm -hmm. So the the clinical help, a a counselor or a grief counselor, a therapist, or even a support group can help you move through those emotions Mm -hmm. and move on to healing and mental stability. Are there any misperceptions about grief and about people who are grieving and about maybe how long it should take or, you know, some people say, well, you should be better by now, yeah. you know. Um, and, and we hear that a lot. Yeah. And, and a lot of times people come in to the office because they say, I'm still feeling grief and everyone's telling me I should have moved on past this. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is no timeline. For okay. Grief. Okay. It is as individual as each of us are individuals. The grieving process itself is that individual. Um, And we won't all experience it the same way or the same timeline. So it is important to allow ourselves the time, whatever that time may be. I think another um, misrepresentation is that we might look okay on the outside. Yes. We might put on that brave face Mm -hmm. for friends and family. Mm -hmm. But just because we look okay on the outside, that doesn't mean we're feeling okay on the inside. Mm -hmm. And And we don't need to put on that brave face. Right. That it is okay to experience our grief. And I think one of the most important things is to share it with people and talk with others face to face. There's also a difficulty um, when we do that because some of our friends and family, they get uncomfortable with hearing about our grief or with being there to comfort us or or listen to us um, because they feel awkward. They don't know how to help us. Right. So they might withdraw as well. And that's when it's really important again to seek professional counseling. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Um, I just would encourage anyone who is experiencing grief at this time to really seek out therapy. It sounds like that is a wonderful solution to to helping with the process of healing. It is. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was such good information. I'm so thankful for Shield Bearer. If you are just joining us or if you're on YouTube or Facebook, I would encourage you right now what you're learning is you're learning all of the very amazing ways to deal with mental health issues. This is not something that we have to be ashamed of or embarrassed of. Everybody deals with mental issues. It happens to us all. A life affects us. Let's acknowledge that and let's do something about it. And that's exactly what Shield Bearer is doing. If you're on our Facebook page or our YouTube page, there's a link where you can click to give, to make a donation to Shield Bearer that's going to make a difference in people's lives in the Houston community and beyond because the plan is much bigger than Houston. It's the world. And um, I don't know who doesn't need some help and some hope in their lives. I know we all know somebody who could use um, some counseling from Shield Bearer. So that's what you've joined. Um, would you stick with us? It's an amazing program. We're about to listen to George A. Bear. My name is Hebert. His name is A. Bear. It's spelled the same. I'm from Texas. He's probably not. Um, <laughs> uh, the only thing that you should never call us is Herbert because there isn't an R there. And I I don't get attitude with anybody about anything, but when they call me Amanda Herbert, I get get some attitude. (laughs) I don't know why. (laughs) There is no R there. Um, So he's going to talk to us about something that's so important. And and I feel like right now, especially with after lockdown, depression and anxiety. I mean, I know so many people went through this. And they're also, um, they have anxiety about COVID and all of those things. So this is some really good information. So let's listen into what George Hebert has to say. 
Hi, I'm here with George Abair, who's a counselor at um, our Shield Bear Counseling Centers. And today, welcome George, we're going to Thank talk about me. the topic of, of mental health and depression and anxiety. Depression is talked about so much as being a, a really big health issue in our country and worldwide. Maybe you can talk a little bit about statistically maybe like what you see and how big a problem is it and yes uh, yes depression is is an issue um, it's estimated that 300 million people suffer from uh, some form of depression mm -hmm. uh, anxiety can be tied in there as well mm -hmm. it, it depends everybody uh, unfortunately uh, the way that we say it is that everybody's a little bit different right um, depression in men versus women looks very differently and uh, it would take um, a, an assessment as most times to really get at the root of what's causing the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, for some, depression looks like uh, not wanting to get out of bed, a um, psycho, a, a, a thought and motor, a thought and function, mm -hmm. a decrease in thought and function, and or it could look like an anger mm -hmm. or a, a persistent tiredness. Right. and irritation you know right. um, so it it just depends on uh, who we're talking about uh, but yes depression is very very real and it is very very treatable mm -hmm. how what are some of the best um, treatments for for depression I, I mean some people um, take medications but that's that's deeper is is there something better or yes. a first step Yes. To, to treating it. There are several different steps, several different ways at um, um, wrestling with the problem of depression. For some, it's a persistent uh, issue. For some, it can just be temporary. Mm -hmm. But um, there are self-care methods, uh, watching your diet and your nutrition, your exercise mm -hmm. could be a method, uh, is, is one personal method you could take. Talk therapy is another. Okay. Engaging in talk therapy is, is, in my professional opinion, very, very healthy deal to seek help and to uh, seek assistance uh, with your problems. You know, come in, talk, and evaluate how you're living your life and if you want to keep doing it that way. But yes, medications are another opportunity uh, to take care of depression. It's just that uh, in uh, the mental health world that requires a physician uh, right. uh, in order to uh, diagnose and treat that. So. How does a person know if they're stuck in depression? I mean, some life is difficult mm -hmm. and people go on and mm -hmm. it's, it's often hard for people to maybe even approach this topic for themselves and to get help. When is it you know, necessary or? So um, that's an interesting question. And I would say that the best way to get at that is to attune to self. Right. Um, you, you noticing that something is off or if a loved one comes to you and says, you don't seem yourself today, are you okay? And you hear that on a, on a fairly decent uh, regular basis. Regular basis that could be grounds to you know seeking help seeking help there's nothing wrong with seeking help coming in uh, talking about what's going on with you because unfortunately we can have life events that happen to us mm -hmm. the loss of a loved one um, loss of a job and it can put us in a bad place and even though we get a new job we can still be psychologically in that bad place mm -hmm. so yeah, there's been a lot of talk about depression and anxiety with the, uh, resulting from this pandemic. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing in, um, in so uh, your what clients? what I'm seeing is uh, is that the stagnation mm -hmm. I, I would want to say yeah. of sitting in one place and having been in one place like uh, it's. Uh, difficult for clients to to get that funk off of them excuse mm -hmm. the phrase right. um, uh, to to cleanse themselves in such a way but that is again where uh, talk therapy comes in in the play where you can air out realize recognize and alleviate some of those issues and again figure out what it is you want to do different it seems to me that there's a great stigma attached to admitting that 
depression is a problem mm -hmm. for yourself and why do you think that's the case and do you think it's changing do you think there's some some shift maybe in between previous generations and our generation now yes okay. um i i do believe that there is a shift um it is a uh, slow but steady right the shift is that there are more personal books coming out yes. that talk about depression, mm -hmm. bipolar, various different mental health disorders. There are ubiquitous commercials about medications. There are ubiquitous commercials and infomercials about various different interventions. Of course, uh, in the world of, of, of New Age media podcasting, there are mm -hmm. tons of podcasts out that address mental health both um by hosted by professionals and there are also those that are amateurs or who are sufferers and they share in their experience and that for me is a sign that the, the ground is shifting that awareness is lifting uh, and increasing and as a result we're going to have a shift hopefully in policy and insurances so that there's less uh less of a bind from when people do raise their hand and say i want help mm -hmm. what's um the best thing someone can do when they recognize they're they're struggling reach out yeah. um reaching out to a trusted friend a trusted source and reaching out to a local professional finding a, a, a fit a, a, a working therapeutic fit uh, with a therapist can be one of the best decisions that you make for yourself mm -hmm. um, especially because there is a level of professionalism and um, privacy that goes along with that relationship that is unparalleled how long does it take for someone to really feel the benefit of talk therapy i guess it's it depends on the person but, yeah it um, does it does depend on the person but the feelings of relief Yes. Not the cure, but the feelings of relief can be relatively quick. The simple act of talking out your issues and understanding where you are. It's like being in the woods and having a map. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you get lost, you have to take a moment mm -hmm. and really focus on what the contours of the map are telling you and the lay of the land and where you are. And once you find your footing and once you find your location, you can find your way out. And so the relief of knowing where you are on the map is kind of the first steps of the first few sessions of counseling. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, do you yeah. have any last thoughts or anything you would encourage people to do? I would encourage people to um, just seek counseling, seek help yes. uh, early and often. Great. That's what we're here for. Great. Thank you so much, George. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Good job, Mr. A. Bear. Thank you for sharing that wisdom. Um, we have up a next, uh, is very, very important, I believe, uh, marriage and couples counseling, and uh, this name is amazing, Giovanni Valdivia. Uh, <laughs> sounds super smart, I believe it. But <laughs> marriage and um, couples counseling is so important because we come together as two completely individuals, you know, unique individuals, and we have to learn how to, um, you know, live together and not kill each other. And that's very important. It's very important. Um, I remember um, a lot of lessons early on in, in getting married. I remember at 2 a.m. Uh, being on the stairs and just bawling my eyes out because saying, what have I done? Um, but God is good, and counseling is extremely important. So let's see what Giovanni has to tell us. Hi, I'm here with Giovanni Valdivia um, to talk about uh, marriages. Hi, Giovanni. How are you? I'm doing good. Yourself? Great. What are some of the, the trends that you're seeing um, in marriage marriages today and the, the difficulties that that people experience and maybe the difference between marriage in our modern world today and um, in previous generations. I think uh, what I've been seeing with, with a lot of couples uh, is that the traditional marriage is uh, not as prominent as it was in the past. You know, mm -hmm. uh, both parties are working, uh, both have careers, 
both are doing a lot of things that are needed for the household. And so when that happens, a lot of responsibility and uh, disagreements can happen from time to time <laughs> sure. because of, of what they're going through mm -hmm. uh, in their world. And so, you know, this is a new adjustment for a lot of people. Things that they are learning uh, the first time around, not from things that they've seen in the past or from their parents or from those that they respect. And so uh, a lot of times, you know, this is a, a new adventure for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And the pandemic has certainly been difficult on relationships in different ways and marriages. People have been challenged in this time. How, what do you recommend that, that couples do to help in this, with this situation? Well, um, what I've seen uh, is that, you know, couples are having a hard time finding time for themselves. Right. With work being at home or kids going to school at home, there's not a lot of time for them time, we time, uh, you know, couple time. And so when that happens, you know, you, you start to become a little distant. You don't know as what's mm -hmm. going on in your partner's world. But also it's a little bit of the of the opposite where you spend too much time with your partner mm -hmm. and you don't have any time with your things that you enjoy on your own. Mm -hmm. And so it's either one or the other. Sometimes there's a little mix between, but uh, I think with partners, it really is important to make sure to communicate what they're needing. If it's like, hey, I need some you and me time, let's go out for a date, or hey, I need some alone time. I'm gonna go out for a bike ride, you know, making sure that they communicate that uh, is an important part of keeping that, those avenues open. What would you say to a couple that is maybe considering calling it quits or um, is really struggling to stay married, wondering if, if they can work things out or wanting to improve their marriage? I would say hold on mm -hmm. uh, and take a moment to look at the reasons that you started this marriage and also decide if you're willing to put the effort in that's needed because a marriage doesn't stay the same level throughout the whole you know time people tend to have a strong connection in the beginning and then life happens kids happen work happens and the connection gets to a little bit weaker depending on what's going on and so that's when they have to look at it again and try to do different things and so uh, something that uh, I kind of will work with my clients is doing the magic five. Uh, something that uh, I learned from a, the Gottman uh, theory mm -hmm. is that making sure that when you uh, part from each other, that you let each other know one thing that's going on during the day in each of your world, but also giving you know a moment to have an intimate kiss. You know, six seconds can give you a moment of you know joy, a connection. But then also when you get home, you know, reunions, making sure that you spend that time to hear what's going on in someone's life, to hear what, you know, the issues are at work or in, you know, the school area, wherever they may be. But also, once again, reconnecting with that, you know, affection and giving each other some admiration uh, mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you for helping me with this task here. I'm proud of you doing this for me. You know, how many times do we get to hear that during the day? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's really nice to hear it from our partner. And so, you know, other things that can then consider to do is making sure that we dedicate some time to uh, a date night, you know, creating those love maps, understanding mm -hmm. what's going on in your partner's world, dreaming of dreams that you guys have together and enjoying the moments that you have around you. And so some of those things are important for uh, people to reconnect, to reignite, and to relearn, you know, how to care for one another again. So if you have the will, there's always a way. If there's a way, you know, you know hopefully it's through some counseling. Mm -hmm. What would you um, say, uh, what is involved in therapy? And, and if a couple decides to go into, into therapy for a period of time, what would that involve for, uh, for a couple? Well, I would say that, uh, a couple needs to be aware that they're going to be spending a little bit of initial time in the beginning. Okay. Um, you know, the counselor needs to understand uh, what the history of the relationship. And so getting an oral history is important, mm -hmm. but also getting the point of view of each individual. Right. And then finally getting that together with both parties and working on the issues at hand. So initially you could see maybe six sessions 
It's mm -hmm. gonna work on maybe one minor issue, but the bigger the issue, the longer the time it could be possible. But for some instances, some people catch on really quick and work on it really hard, and it could be quicker for them. And it just depends sure. on the situation. What are you seeing right now in in your client base? And do you have any success stories or interesting things to point out for people? Um, I think what I've seen in a lot of couples lately is um, struggle. Yes. Struggle in their you know their personal lives, their financial lives, right. and their careers right. as well. And what what they can do at times is struggle together, mm -hmm. be each other's support, and in in different ways. And that's something that I've seen with some couples, and this last year that I've kind of been able to help them use the connections, the strengths that they have for themselves to help their partners. And I've seen a few couples uh, lately who've had some down times, who've mm -hmm. had some struggles earlier this year, right. you know, lost people, lost jobs, but they used each other in a way to lift each other up. And that's where I see those success, success stories is where they, you know, take the time to get to know each other again so they can use you know those great traits that they found attractive the first time around to help them through this, this difficult times. Is it also mm -hmm. useful for couples to be in their own individual counseling uh, on their own in some cases? Yes, in some mm -hmm. cases it's very important that an individual takes care of some personal issues that they may have because those issues may lead into the relationship mm -hmm. and where trust and commitment are necessary in a relationship. You may have people who have you know, trust issues from something from their past, mm -hmm. a previous relationship, a, a family member that they knew, and making sure that, that they are able to trust again within themselves is gonna be the next step for them to trust a partner in their mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And so um, at times, uh, there might be a moment where it's like, hey, we can continue couples therapy but also I think it'd be good to kind of take a look at, you know, seeing some individual therapy for a little bit. Okay, great. Thank you so much for sharing your, um, your feedback and um, yeah. the information today. I appreciate cool. it. Thank you, Giovanni. I just love saying his name, so I have to. Um, so if you're just joining us, uh, we are on Facebook and we're on YouTube. Uh, we are Shield Bearers, and we are doing a fundraiser. We're, we're raising money to help change Houston one person at a time and in eventually change the world one person at a time. There is a link on Facebook and there's a link on YouTube to click and make a donation. I encourage you to do that. Make a difference in the community around you just by making a difference in one person's life. Every amount helps. So I just encourage you to do that. Um, my name is Amanda Hebert. I am a comedian and um, motivational speaker. And I started doing comedy about six years ago. Um, really what got me into it is uh, I had crazy children and I, it was either counseling or comedy, and I didn't know about y'all, and counseling was too expensive. This was much cheaper, and so that's why I went into comedy, and um, so I'll just tell you, uh, that's what I do. I tell you about my crazy family. What happened, what had happened was uh, my parents are the crazy ones, and it skips a generation, thank God. <laughs> I'm completely normal, uh, but those kids, they all got it. Um, so my, uh, my parents are, they are just wonderful. They are wonderfully weird. <laughs> they, they, they are wonderful people. They love God and, and they are just amazing. But the, if you notice, like the older your parents get, the weirder they get. And they know, I, they, I, all these jokes are approved, okay? So don't go telling my parents. Um, <laughs> but they've approved them. Um, like, I notice now when I drive into the driveway of their house that I can feel the television. You know, when I step onto the, it's so loud <laughs> that I can feel the vibration. I know what's on. The news is on. And I can hear it from outside the house. And I don't understand. They didn't do that whenever I was. I don't know why. I don't know why they do that. They just listen to the TV at, you know, earthquake 
it loud. It's like, that's what it feels like. It's just the, the whole house rumbles. Maybe it's because, you know, if they have to step away and go to the restroom, they can still hear it through the vibrations in the walls. The same story that's been going on a hundred times that day. You know, we, we have to be informed. Um, so my dad, um, he is a great man. He's a veteran. I honor him, and I also make fun of him, and he knows it. Uh, he... <laughs> He's in this new mode of, my dad has always been um, very uh, physically fit, worked out, you know, all the time. He's just a great example that I never followed. But uh, <laughs> but um, he uh, works out at the gym every day. He goes to the gym. But now he's like, he doesn't even try anymore. He's like, uh, he just wears jeans and a T-shirt, you know, and his veteran's cap always. And I'm like... Why do you, do you are you just get to a point where you just don't bur burst out in a sweat? Is that why you can wear jeans to the gym? I mean, I'm not <laughs> I'm not asking you to wear yoga pants because ain't nobody want to see that, okay? Nobody wants to see even yoga pants, but like workout shorts or something. Anyways, so he wears jeans to the gym, um, <laughs> and uh, he wears his baseball cap. You know, he's a veteran, so you know you know these veterans. They every hat that they own is a veteran's hat, you know, and um, so he wears his hat, but he wears it like set right on top of his head, do y'all, anybody, <laughs> like this is not pressed down, it's just like right, it's, it's gonna make it, I'm like, dad, if somebody passes by you and sneezes, that hat is gone, but thank God you get a hundred more, we're gonna be good, but I always laugh at him because I'm like, what do you think, are you, you have it set up that high because um, you, you want people to think there's a lot of hair under there, because... <laughs> You're not fooling anybody, Dad. <laughs> we can tell. There's hairs. There's not hair. There's hairs. They're countable. <laughs> he, uh, during, during the lockdown, uh, he called me and told me, yeah, Mom gave, Mom gave me a haircut. And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure she gave you a hair's cut. And that took all of two seconds. But anyways, he is a hoot. My dad is uh, the reason I have such a great personality. Uh, <laughs> no, but he is uh, very funny. He was, uh, But he's also very, I can't call him cheap, um, so I'll call him frugal. Um, so I call him Fancy Frugal, though, because when I was growing up, he was the cook in our house, and um, he always made uh, rice or or hamburger, you know, hamburger helper. Y'all know, y'all know this, but we never called it rice or or hamburger helper. We would have chicken quasimadramia. <laughs> yes, I not promise you, I'm not making that up. I, he will verify that he ma he made that up. I didn't, but he. Or we have uh, beef panoopy, which was beef, potatoes, noodles, and peas. That's. <laughs> anyways, yes, and then so he would shop at at Walmart. Anybody know the name brand of items? A Walmart starts with an E. Anybody? Oh, you guys are frou frou. Equa. Thank you. So not in my house. It was Equate. Because we are fancy frugal, we shop at Target, and we use Equate. And so he, oh Lord, there's so many stories. I, I don't have enough time. Y'all have to come to another show and hear the rest of the rest of the story. But um, when I was a teenager, I always wanted, you know, um, the best fragrances like my friends had, you know. Um, but he said, "Oh no, baby, we're not we're not gonna pay stupid tax. Not today." <laughs> so he takes me to Walgreens. And introduces me to a line called Fragrance Impressions. Girls, anybody remember these things? They're little aerosol bottles about this big, very brightly colored. And it says, <laughs> still, oh, they still have them. <laughs> it says, if you love eternities, oh, what is it? Is it Calvin Klein's eternity? You'll love forever. <laughs> or the other one, if you want escape. Oh, I just wanted escape. You'll love, get out of there, fool. <laughs> but y'all, I just wanted Estee Lauder's beautiful. I just want to be beautiful, daddy. Instead, I got great personality. <laughs> I'll put that on before a date. That's a real confidence builder. Thanks, dad. <laughs> At least I got this great personality. Let's see what else. Okay, so my mom, uh, she is... Wonderful. She's your Karen. Anybody know who Karen is? <laughs> don't tell her. No, my mom, um, I don't call her nosy. Um, I call her a private investigator. Um, tomato, tomato. They're the same thing. Uh, she is uh, the president of her HOA. 
Yeah, so you know. <laughs> you know her. But watch out, because she's probably trying to get in on your HOA, too. She is something else. She has held several different jobs, uh, as long as I've known her. She's had uh, three different jobs. No, no, but no, no matter what job she had, she all, her gifting always rose to the top. She was always a private investigator, even as administrative assistant, <laughs> as uh, inside sales. I mean, everything she did, she, she literally was busting people all the time. I mean, <laughs> whatever business she had, she found fraud. She found, I mean, she, all the time, she got her companies thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars back because she missed her calling. C C Cagney and Lacey, is, that's what she was. <laughs> That was her shows. Growing up, we had to watch Columbo, Cagney and Lacey, all, all those shows. Cops. Oh, my God. We watched so much Cops. I never committed a crime ever. I was terrified. But literally, my mom is responsible for three arrests in her own neighborhood. And she's not a cop, um, but she is best friends with the chief of police and the fire chief. I'm not kidding you. He has, she has them on speed dial. They know her. So she's a character, y'all. I could write a whole show about her. So that's mom. Then I have these children, okay? I got, I got a 14-year-old uh, genius, a 12-year-old artist, and an 8-year-old terrorist. <laughs> don't judge me. You don't know her. She is something else, but I have to talk about these other two because she takes a whole, I got a whole set for that one. So my 14-year-old is my son, and he literally is one of those kids who started building, you know, building blocks very early and, and just could um, make everything. And what's what, one thing I'm just now remembering is when he was little, um, he always wanted the directions of things, you know, when we got, we got him the sets to build stuff. But he got the word wrong. He would always ask me, I need the erections. I need the er <laughs> he doesn't like that joke. But it's okay. I'm going to tell you. Right. Anyways, um, but he was just, he's super smart. But it's the day-to-day -day things that he kind of misses. Like I remember one time when he was uh, younger. Now, I've taught them. You know, I want my children to be self-sufficient, but they know how to take a bath. So one night I was giving him a hug after he had taken a bath, and I hugged him, and his hair smelled like wet dog. And I was like, uh, I knew he had been up there for a while. I was like, did you use shampoo? And he said, no, ma'am. I was like, uh, did you use soap? No, ma'am. So you just went up there and got wet. Yes, go get a shower. But this is something that I've dealt with him his whole life. I, I remember telling him, you know, teaching him how to keep his room clean and bring down dirty clothes and all that kind of stuff. And this is why I don't go upstairs because when I do, I just get mad because all the roles, all the teaching and training I've, I've done bupkis. Like I remember going into his drawer one day and opening it up and I pulled out a shirt that was so dirty a chicken nugget fell out of it. <laughs> like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Um, but I will tell you uh, that there is a God, and he does provide vengeance. My son was played with Legos all the time. So do you all know what happened? I stepped on Legos all the time. My feet are deformed now from all the Legos that I've had to have surgically removed from the bottom of my feet. But the other day, so he's 14 now. He's about this tall. And the other day, he stepped on a Lego. And it hurt. And I laughed. <laughs> And I laughed. And I said, wait, 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 wait. Let me go get my phone. Could you do that again? Because I have to. I have to record that. But that, so that's my, my genius. Um, he went to, uh, at school, they do this testing uh, that, you know, their personality traits. And he came home, and he's like, Mom, guess what I am? I'm like, what? A debater. And he's, like, all excited. I was like, uh, duh. Like, I've been telling you that since you were little. I, you should have been an attorney. But, yeah, so, like, he's all proud his, that he's a debater. And his favorite is that he likes to debate about things he doesn't even care about. Yeah, that's, that's exactly, yeah, mm-hmm, you're 14. This is what I deal with. So then I have my sweet middle child, my artist. She's an artist. She's a singer. She can act. I mean, she is just a doll. She's the glue that holds our family together. And um, I, I've always talked to my children in accents since they were little because I just thought that was fun. And you don't realize that your kids pick up on the things that you do. And I've always talked in accents because I've always loved a Southern Belle drawl. You know, with shell that. And I also have family from East Texas, you know. So you got to get real nasally so they understand what you're saying. 
So I have talked to them like that. Well, the, I, you don't realize that your kids pick up on that. And a few years ago, um, my husband had made breakfast for my kids, and he made pancakes. And when I go to the store, I buy butter, B-U-T-T-U, butter. Like, it's real. It's from a cow. You know, I like that. My, but my husband loves that con- country crockety crock. You know, <laughs> there's, like, nothing real inside that. And so... Um, So one day he put it on my daughter's pancakes, and my daughter came up to me, and she said, Mother, the butter on my pancakes isn't melted, Mother. I don't even believe that's butter, Mother. Like, wow, (laughs) you are dramatic. And she is. She, uh, when she started junior high, she discovered drama. And um, she, like, just eats it up. I remember when I was waiting, the very first time I was waiting for her to come out of drama club, and she, uh, unbeknownst to me, had decided she was going to come out as a character. So she's this eight, this 100-year-old lady with her invisible walker. <laughs> We're in car line. People can see her, and she's walking like this. She's got her walker. I see you, baby. I'm coming. I get out of my car. If you don't get out, you're here right now. We'll kill you. <laughs> but she, she developed all these characters, and she would have, she would want to get in the car with my, with her characters. Like, uh, uh-uh, your characters got to stay here. I only, I'm only taking one person home. So that was my middle child, and then the blessing, the eight-year-old, literally. Uh, we were in Bulgaria on a missions trip, and a missionary who did not speak English told us that God was going to give us a third child, and I nearly lost my mind. I literally, when I heard him saying that out of the corner of my mind, I said, he said what? <laughs> and uh, it's been that way ever since. Um, so she, she is white as I am, blue, blue, sea blue eyes, and orange red hair. And the personality to go with it, you know. Uh, you don't even have to ask. That child is a ginger, and she is amazing. Uh, she's crazy. Uh, I remember <laughs> she was probably two or three years old, and I was laying in the living room floor, and she comes running from the other side. of the, She sees me, and she comes running from the other side of the living room floor, tucks her knees into her chest, and lands right on my chest. And then she grabs my face, and she said, I bet you didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> I'm like, girl, that describes your whole life. <laughs> she has rocked my world. Her first day of kindergarten, she gets in the car, and I was like, well, baby, how was your day? And she said, well, I didn't cry, and I didn't poop my pants. So I guess it was a good day. I said, dear God, what was happening in your classroom? <laughs> Is it, these kids losing their mind, pooping their pants? I don't know. See, see, she's a mess. So um, one day we were sitting in the car waiting on my husband to come out of the store, and my do- and my baby leans over to my son, and she whispers something, and he said, Mom, Macy just called me a butt. And she said, no, I didn't, no, I didn't. I called him a booty. I said, Macy, you know that we don't allow those words in our house. And so she rolls her eyes. She leans back over to her brother and whispers something. And he said, Mom, she did it again. She said, no, I didn't, no, I didn't. I called him a Buddhist. <laughs> like, you are, th- how, you're three. How do you know what a Buddhist is? <laughs> I don't know. What else does she do? Oh, so this girl has got big personality and lots of confidence, okay? Um, you know how when your kids watch cartoons, they like to find a character that they're going to be, you know, uh, when they would watch Frozen. Um, I'm going to be Anna, you be Anna, Anna, not Anna. I'm going to be Anna, you be Elsa, that kind of stuff. So my mom bought the girls uh, the Jesus cartoons. You know what I'm talking about? The Bible cartoons where, so one day they're watching it, and Macy leans over to her big sister. She said, Maddie, which one are you? I'm God. I'm uh, like, um, Macy, you realize, like, he's just a voice in the clouds, right? And she's like, yeah, well, he's in charge. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I should be terrified or, like, really proud. But <laughs> but that's this child. Oh, let's see. What else did she do? Um, one of the things that she did that just uh, keep me rolling um, is the watermelon story. So one day uh, last year, she was going to be in her Christmas program. And um, 
she, her shirt was wrinkled. And so I, she, I said, Macy, you need to take that off because I need to iron your shirt. And she says, okay. And then she covers her chest and she looks at her brother and she says, don't look at my watermelons. <laughs> and I was like, um, you're seven. You don't have watermelons. She said, yeah, but these are watermelon seeds. <laughs> So I immediately said, um, you don't go to school and talk about watermelons or watermelons, because we don't talk about that at home. So I don't know where this kid gets this stuff from. She is a hot mess. Um, she terrifies me most of the time. Uh, one day we were, uh, she likes to get up really, really early in the morning. Like she's one of those early risers that just irritates you. You know what I'm talking about? Like when she, was, when she would wake up in the morning, she'd be like, it's morning, it's morning time. I'm awake, I'm awake, it's morning, it's morning time. So she's calmed down a little bit since then, but she w she wakes up at 6.45 every single day, whether it's Saturday or not. And when she wakes up, everybody must be awake. And so she'll come in. One Saturday she came in, and she was uh, she jumped on us. She was wrestling with me, and then I looked down, and uh, she's laying in my lap, and the sun's coming through the window. And um, I look down, and she's just got a really great smirk on her face. And I was like, what are you what are you smirking about? She says, you know, you have a beautiful mustache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then when I got over that, she said, and your unibrow's not half bad either. <laughs> yeah. So this is my world, y'all. This is why I joined comedy. <laughs> because I don't know what to do with this child. But now I know that I can come to Shield Bearer. Can I just drop her off? <laughs> I think I'm going to need like a week-long camp or something. Um, but it has been my absolute pleasure to be with you guys tonight. One thing I want to remind you is Proverbs 17.22 says, A cheerful heart doeth good like medicine. And that is what I want you to remember is regardless of the situation that we're walking through in 2020, regardless of COVID, we can have a chill for heart, cheerful heart, and we can walk in hope. Thank you so much for letting me be here. Hi, my name is Kathy Lee, and I currently serve as the chair of the board of directors for Shield Bearer Counseling Centers. People often ask me what it is about Shield Bearer that I like and why I serve. What I wanna to talk to you today about is the fact that I'm not only the chair of the board, I'm a donor. When people ask me why I donate, I have three key reasons that I give them, all very important. First, I am passionate for the mission of Shield Bearer. You see, Shield Bearer exists to enrich and strengthen the relationships of our most critical unit, the family. They work on the relationship between husbands and their wives. They work on the relationship between parents and their children. They work on the relationship that we have each with ourselves. Secondly, I give to Shield Bearer because I can see what it does because it serves my local community. This is the place that I live. And the people that go to Shield Bearer are people that I pass in the grocery store aisle every week. Persons that sit next to me in the pews on Sunday. People that I even pass on the road when I'm in my car. So I know the dollars that I give to Shield Bearer go to serve the people that I choose to live with and near. And finally, I give to Shield Bearers because I know where every penny of every dollar goes. You see, Shield Bearer as a charity gives between 90 and 95% of every dollar it receives serving the people that need it most. We don't live in a fancy headquarters. We don't have a lot of staff and overhead. The money goes to meet the needs of the people that come, regardless of whether they can pay for the service or not. You see, I give for those reasons, and I believe you should give to charities for the same. And so today, I would ask you to give to Shield Bear, but only, only, if it meets a passion of yours, if you share that passion for family strength that I have. Give to Shield Bearer if you believe that serving your local community is something that you want to do. Give to Shield Bearer 
If you want the knowledge that the money that you are giving is meeting the needs of the people you've chosen to serve. There are lots of great charities in America, lots of things that you can give to. And if your passion is something different than mine, if your community is larger or different than this one here in Greater Houston, if you believe that image and appearance is important to the success of the charitable agency that you contribute to, then donate to them. If you agree with mine, if you want to be part of the Shield Bearer family, I ask you go to our website, find the donation button, call the office, find out where you can mail that check and do it today. We would welcome you as part of the Shield Bearer family. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for tuning in. And I want to thank Amanda for being here and offering us her talents and a little humor. Isn't it great to laugh? I want to thank Illumination Marketing, who helped put all of our production together, and Crucial Productions, who helped stream. And I want to thank everybody who has donated tonight and watching at home. And please go to shieldbearer.org, make your donation if you have not done so yet. You've heard from Kathy Lee about why she gives. You've heard about so many things that Shieldbearer does and has done for the past 15 years. So now is the time. Please go to shieldbearer.org and make your donation now. This year, it's more critical than any year yet, and we would much appreciate, and so would our clients. Also, because of this virtual world that we're living in, our giving can go on and on. So please look at our Facebook page, and when you see this video, out, share it, and we can keep sharing throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout uh, this season as we go on. And comment in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Um, let's see, hashtag ShieldBearer2020, please use that in your comments, and we hope to see you, and thank you so much. We want to be here for you, your family, and those you love. Call us anytime. ShieldBearer is here to answer your need, and God bless you.